Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Thank Sunday you. Night Satsang with John and Michelle. Mm, hi, everybody. Yes. Beautiful new moon today. Quite an auspicious day today, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. The eight, eight, yeah. Lion's Gate. Yeah, it's a poet. You're a poet, yeah, John. I am. Eight, eight, <laughs> Lion's Gate. And it's new moon. Yeah. So new it's, moon it's in Leo. Mm -hmm. So we've got all these lions, Leo, fire. Yeah. So yeah, this, is a, this is a very auspicious evening and um, we thank you for joining us tonight and we ask that you've, you know, settled yourself in, made yourself comfortable and um, just, um, you know, requested that your space be left sacred for the next hour. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we always light a, a candle and uh, you might like to do the same. It just adds a certain ambiance, a certain intention of sacred gathering. Uh, and that's why we do it. And um, yeah, maybe you want to light some incense if that's your yeah. if that's in your yeah, life. Yeah, it sets the scene. Yeah, it sets the scene. Yeah. So welcome. We've got some lovely rain here in Cape Town tonight. Mm. And uh, yeah, you can just let us know where you are. We always like to hear who we're talking to. So if you're just in the comments box, let us know where you are at. And um, if you like what we have to share tonight, then please just press the like button and share. It great. really does help get the get the um, podcast out into the world if you yeah. press share because YouTube and um, Facebook seem to be really restricting us, throttling us at the moment. So you can yeah, help by help liking and commenting anything. and uh, and pressing share. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you for being with us tonight. Mm -hmm. well, so we're going to start out uh, doing, not doing, we're going to start out being <laughs> <laughs> the most important um, part of our day is when we anchor ourselves back into reality. So you might like to settle back in your chairs, see that you're comfortable and gently close your eyes. And as we close our eyes, we become more tuned to the body and to the physical senses that we have. That's why we shut our eyes. You don't have to shut your eyes. You can do an open eye meditation, which is quite nice if you have a candle in front of you and you keep your eyes open and focused on the candle. That's a nice way of doing it as well. But just by shutting your eyes, you just limit your perception and bring it inwards. Bring your awareness inwards. So we do that by feeling our body. Becoming aware of this physical meat suit that we put on every day when we wake up in the morning. And just become aware of all the sensations that this body is feeding into your awareness right now. Become aware of the chair that you're sitting on. Is it hard or soft? Are you comfortable? Your backrest, is that supporting you in this moment? Your feet are possibly on the floor. Your hands may be resting in your, your lap. Become aware of the sounds in your environment. We have the soft sound of rain. Not too sure what you can hear, but just stretch your hearing to hear the faintest, furthest sounds that you can hear right now. When you're truly listening, you become present. Your mind clears of all the clutter. You become alert, you're paying attention to what this moment has to offer. And then the other portal into presence that we always use is the breath and the breathing. So take a very deep breath in, drawing the air right the way down to your belly button, pulling your tummy out like a big ball, and then releasing it, letting it go, dropping your shoulders, relaxing your neck muscles, just relaxing and centering yourselves further down into your body. Take another very deep breath in, pulling the air right the way down to your toes this time. And then that beautiful, long, very, very long surrendering breath out. The out breath is a really important part because that's the releasing and the letting go, which is quite important for tonight. Take another very deep breath in again, drawing the air right the way down to your solar plexus and lower down to your feet. So you're blowing your tummy up and then take it right up to the top of your head as well. So you're blowing your whole body up more, 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 more. And then that release, that long sigh out, just letting it all go, withdrawing your mind from all other times and all other places, and just becoming supremely focused in the here and now. 
Just allow life to breathe you gently in and out and keeping your awareness on your breath and you might like to bring your awareness to the tip of the nose. Just becoming aware of the flow of the breath in and out through your nostrils. And as you do that, you see if you can pick up the temperature variance between the in-breath and the out-breath. And the out-breath and the in-breath. Noticing the slight pause between the two. And with every out-breath, just sink down further and deeper into your bodies, into the present moment, into the here and now. The in-breath may be seen as a bit of a doing, but the out-breath is definitely a releasing, a surrendering, a letting go. And as we breathe out, there's also an element of trust there, which is beautiful, because we trust that the next breath will be there for us. So we're settling back into alignment with life, trusting that life will breathe us. And that's a beautiful place to be. As we sit here tonight, we're aware of the auspicious nature of tonight, the alignment of energies of tonight. And in your imagination, just bring the, the, the number eight, but lie it sideways so it becomes a sign of infinity. So just in your awareness, you have this eight lying on its side and it becomes a sign of infinity. And just become aware that the one bubble is your past and the bubble on the other side is your future. And in this moment, just bring your awareness to that center point, to the crossover point right in the center of that sign of infinity. And connect that with your third eye, which is just above your eyebrows in the center of your forehead. Just feel a connection to that sign of infinity, to the center point in the sign of infinity. Now that crossover point represents the collapse of your story, the collapse of time. And as we collapse time, we realize the vertical plane, the depth of being. This is life. This is reality. Here and now. So keeping that image in mind, just bring your awareness supremely into the here and now. Being aware of everything around you, being aware of the sounds and the sensations from the body, and at the same time being aware of your thoughts as they float through your awareness. They float through the center point, but don't hold on to them. And don't follow them with your awareness into the bubbles. Just keep your awareness supremely focused on that point in the middle of your forehead. Keep your awareness supremely focused in the here and now, in what we would call life. Life is only ever here and now. Life is the energy that breathes you. And in this moment, we honor the life that's in our body. This life that gives us the breath, that gives us the beating heart, that digests our food, that takes all the nourishments to every single cell in the body, every moment of the day and night. We honor this energy called life that inhabits our body, that inhabits our hands and our fingers. We become aware of this energy in our feet, this energy we call life. And we draw this life up from Mother Earth, up our legs, up our torso, up our spine. And as it moves up, so it relaxes each part of our body. It enlivens it with new energy, but at the same time it brings peace. Relaxing your shoulders, the back of your neck, up over the top of your head, relaxing your forehead, smoothing away any worry lines. Relaxing your cheeks and your jaw. 
relaxing your tongue and your cheeks, relaxing every aspect of your face, moving down, relaxing more your neck and your shoulders once more, and down your arms, relaxing your arms and relaxing your hands. And in this moment, let's just be grateful for being here together tonight, in this space, in this lion's gate. And with our body totally relaxed, and our attention focused on the space between your eyebrows, and the center point of the sign of infinity, So we open, we open our hearts to this lion energy, to this energy of Leo, to the energy of fire, to the energy of transformation, transition, to the energy of love and creativity. We open. Just feel what it feels like to sit in a space of being open. And you find as you do that, as you feel this open, you feel the sensation of allowing and accepting and appreciating life just in this moment exactly as it is here and now. And let's feel this beautiful energy and let's see it with a sense of beauty. For the, the seeing through the eyes of beauty is a powerful way of opening our heart. For only when our hearts are open can we truly perceive beauty. While the mind judges, the heart opens and sees beauty. So for the next little while, let's just center ourselves in our heart, opening our heart, connecting our heart to our third eye and seeing beauty. Just in our imagination, seeing beauty, beauty in the world. Beauty in your relationship, beauty in your partner, your children, grandchildren. Seeing beauty in the trees and the plants and the animals. Seeing beauty in the world. The world of minerals and crystals, and seas and oceans and lakes. And insects and flowers. There is so much beauty. We are so blessed to be here on earth. Just feel this opening your heart. We are blessed to be here together tonight on this auspicious day. Take another very deep breath into your bodies now. Very, very deep breath. Blowing your tummy up like a big ball. Take the air right to the top of your head so you're really blowing yourself up. And then that beautiful very long, relaxing breath out, letting everything go. And when you're ready, you may very gently, very softly open your eyes and just see how you feel in this moment. See how you feel. See how you feel. Do you feel a bit softer, a bit more centered, a bit more at ease? Mm, lovely, thank you. Thanks, John. Welcome, everyone, on this beautiful evening. So if you, if some of you might have seen my video, and I'm sure that you've seen a lot on Lionsgate because everyone's writing about it. Um, it's not really um, pure astrology, Lionsgate, or the opening and the, um, and the portal. So it's not something I know a huge amount about. But what I do know about is New Moon, 
and I do know that Lionsgate happens every year on the 8th of the 8th and it's a very unique alignment um, in the heavens and it's also a very powerful day being the 8th of the 8th of the 8th because it's a very transformative day mm. so there's quite a few factors so every year that happens on the same day but it doesn't always happen on a new moon and so when it happens obviously new moon energy is really really um thank you Alison that's the line on the wall is um, was done by John's daughter. Yeah, my daughter Claire painted. Yeah. Well, she drew she that a long, long time ago. Yeah, just on a bit of um, brown paper, out. actually. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so basically, a new moon happens every month, and it's a very it's a PowerPoint, as is a full moon. So new moons are always where the sun and the moon come together, and it's a it's a beginning. It's the it's the beginning of a new cycle. So it's always a time to plant new seeds. So because this is such a powerful day, with all these alignments happening, this is an extra powerful day to plant new seeds. And if we look at the kind of seeds that we are planting, we're planting heart seeds. Because um, Leo is a sign that rules the heart. It's aligned with love. It's aligned with creativity. It's aligned with expressing our unique essence out into the world. That's what Leo is about. So really a new moon like this is to is to go into your heart, which we'll do at the end of this um, satsang. I'll take you through a meditation. And we've already done a bit of it with John's beautiful opening. But to go into your heart and actually plant seeds of what you really want to bring into your life. And not just about things and, um, you know, that you want things resolved, but really deep seeds. So, for example, if you have... Um, a desire to find a partner or you have a desire to find a job or whatever it is of your purpose whatever it is see if you can connect with what would you feel if you found that so if you found the partner if you found the perfect job if you had lots of money or whatever it is that your 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 desires are how would that make you feel and that's the intention to plant in the heart so it's a bigger intention and it's actually, a, it's, it's almost more of an intention for humanity as opposed to just us. Because when we're planting seeds like that, those seeds are going out into the field and that is changing the field. And right now this field can do with some love and peace and, and change and joy. Yeah. So, so it's words like joy and peace and love, but they'll be unique to you. So while we're talking, just see if anything comes to to you. And possibly when you go into the meditation afterwards, um, it will. It'll come in. So that's the seed to plant. And this Lionsgate portal apparently is open from about a week ago all the way to the 14th. So it's it's an opening, but it's sort of this is the this is the PowerPoint of it. And as John said, that infinity sign with the center, that's the point. And I see that as the as the heart. So, you know, that's where we're completely connected to all that is. So that's our PowerPoint. Um, so really, it's, it's, it's very, very powerful. It's a powerful day, and it's, it's giving rise to a powerful month ahead. And we're wishing uh, Linda Skitter a happy birthday. Yeah, so hi, she's Linda. Got her, happy birthday. She's got <laughs> a birthday today, so that's a power day to yeah. have a birthday. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. this is going to be a, a very good year, I think, yeah. for you, Linda. Yeah. And anybody else who's new moon, is. planting new seeds, Linda. Yeah. That's new, the beauty. New seeds. Yeah. And also, you know, we're not really letting go of new moon, but we are choosing the seeds that we plant. So if we choose to plant seeds of polarity or um, concern or anxiety or, or judgment, judgment yeah. then we're planting those seeds. Yeah. So in the next few days, it's not just today, today's a PowerPoint, for the next week, keep planting those seeds. When you find yourself going off onto a tangent about the negativity in the world or in your life and how terrible it is and how you're lacking in things, see if you can just shift yourself straight back and actually say the opposite. Feel the opposite. Feel it inside you. It's also a very good night for creativity. So I went into a lot of detail in the blog, which I, the vlog, the video thing. So I won't go into it in too much detail yeah, now. Yeah, a copy of that for those who missed it is just low down on, on the Facebook page you're on now and on my Facebook page. Is it? There's a copy of that, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, so I think I put it up. 
I'm not sure. Otherwise, it's on my page, Michelle McLuhan. And it's also on our new Facebook page, which is Journeys of Awakening. So just um, the link is below in John, on John's page. So please go to that page and like it because we're going to be starting to have the satsangs on that page. Hmm. Not next hmm. week, but in the next few weeks, yeah. once enough of you have liked the page. Yeah, so you just need to like the page and, and uh, so you get notified. Yeah. yeah. It's important we'll to do that. Journey, journeys of awakening. And inspirations yeah. and stuff there as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so really that's the energy that we wanted to just talk about. Hmm. It's opening, it's um, love, it's creativity, it's standing in our... Our true power. Yeah, we know from from a, a gardening point of view. I love gardening. Not that I garden too much anymore, but I used to. Um, you know, the new moon is a time when you start planting new seeds physically in the ground. You know, and um, and so we can look at the heart as a fertile fertile place for planting these seeds. And as Michelle said, the most important seeds to plant are not wishes, but they are feelings. Feelings. What is it you really? really really want the first really is what the mind comes up with the ego its desire and the second really is what you've been programmed to believe you ought to have in life but we're not interested in those first two it's the third really that's really important the really 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 and that is what does your heart yearn for you know if you if you had everything that you could ever want in the world of things um, how would you feel what is that ultimate feeling that you're looking for just meditate on that um, contemplate that and then plant that feeling as a seed in your heart um, and it will be given extra extra power at the moment with the lion's gate and the new moon together and uh, you'll find that th the feelings that you ultimately come up with if you look at the the, uh, the matrix video uh, that i have with the horizontal plane which is time mm -hmm. and stuff and things and then the vertical plane and it's the vertical plane that gives us the, the essence of what the heart really, really, really wants. It's all in the vertical plane, which is here and now, which is present. And you can start feeling that feeling now. And that will expand into the matrix, into the world, and into the into your future um, experience in, in beautiful ways, in beautiful mm. ways, yeah. Yeah, and then over the next few weeks, nurture those little seedlings like you would in the garden. Water yeah. them, yeah. look at them. Keep repeating Notice that them, yeah. seedling to yourself, that mm. seed that you have. Mm. If it's joy, make sure that you have some time of joy every day. Mm. If it's creativity, if it's freedom, if it's peace, if it's love, whatever it is, water that. Mm. Really look at it and say, mm. how can I bring more in, more of that yeah. into my life? Not more of what I want in the outside world, because that's not always possible. We can't always control the outside world. But we can actually control the way we feel. So we can bring ourselves back to that place of, I want more love. Okay, how can I give more love? How, how can, can I feel, I more, feel love more love in this moment? Because in the, you know, in yeah. the, love is not something actually to be, to, to be actually yeah. given or received, believe it or not. Love is always to be opened Imminated. up to. Yeah. So it's like the sun. The sun doesn't yeah. give us light. It radiates yeah. light. And, and love is something to be just opened up to and radiated. And so if there's anything, you know, you want the feeling, just radiate that feeling into, into the world, into your, into your thoughts. You know, we're building a new world at this moment. Believe it or not, we've been, apparently, we've been on permanent lockdown now for 500 days. days. Can you believe it? 500 days. And yeah, that might seem very oppressive in certain ways. And yes, it is. But it is also squeezing us to find a new way of living, a new way of being. And I, I believe nothing happens by accident. And that this is a time of great transformation and i always say it's easier to wake up from a nightmare than a comfortable dream you know when the dream is comfortable or, and the shopping centers are all flourishing and everyone's open you know then there's no incentive to say there has to be a better way but when times get tough and like they are at the moment there is great incentive to say hang on is there not a better way to be in the world and there it definitely is with every thought that we think Every thought we think and every feeling we feel, we are, um, I, I want to say, voting for a new world. But I'm going to use an even stronger word. We are building a new world with every thought and every mm -hmm. feeling. They are real energy. They go into the matrix and they transform the future experiences that we're going to have mm -hmm. individually and collectively. 
So now the real power that we have, this is the, 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 the portal at the moment, the landscape is, is, is a powerful portal. And the real power we have is the power of the heart. And when we choose thoughts that are heart-centered, when we choose feelings that are heart-centered, then we are contributing to a wonderful world for ourselves, for our children and our grandchildren to, to, to live in. And that's the power that we have. And um, we've spoken about it before, that the world around us, the media particularly, is trying to, it's called perceptual management. They're trying to direct our perception in a certain direction. Mm-hmm. And that, yeah, many, many, many people are walking in that direction. But as we start to awaken, so we start to choose. We don't let the world around us choose. We don't let our history choose. We choose from the point of power in the present moment. And it's to choose very wisely what world do you want to invest in. Do you want to invest in the world of the matrix, fear, which stands for false evidence appearing real, or the world of love? That's our choice. So just remember, every thought you think and every feeling you hold in your heart, you are expanding into the universe, particularly at the moment with this portal that we're in. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a little bit, you know, when, when you're living your life in a state of anxiety, you're praying for what you don't want. That's what you're doing. You're Giving sowing energy, seeds yeah. out there in the mm. field, literally like you're actually putting seeds out into a field. Mm. You're sowing fe- seeds into a field of exactly what you don't want. Mm. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't have the odd, oh my goodness, that's, you know, I'm a bit scared of that, or I'm a bit fearful of that, or I'm a bit sad about that. But to not wallow in it. So to not stay in that space, to notice it, to feel it if you need to feel it, and then let it pass by and actually return to sowing seeds that are actually going to do something that you actually want to create. So I think that this is a time where we really are finding our co-creatorship. That we are, and this is a very, very powerful portal to do that. And it's not just tonight, so don't worry. It's, it's, it's a while this it's a powerful portal to actually see what am i creating to ask yourself and be honest no i'm actually creating more worry or i'm creating more sadness because i'm spending a lot of time wallowing in sadness and at that, that we have the we have the potential each one of us to change our state as soon as we become aware of it it's not suppressing it's allowing the state to be there noticing it and then just making a decision to actually bring you bring yourself back and as john's beautiful model says you bring yourself back into that that beautiful center place and that's the heart and that's when your heart opens yeah, that's where the yeah. heart opens yeah so this this journey this transformation that we're making as a species right now is is from a, a, a we, we've been predominantly head based for a long time left brain analytical time based processing of information and that's great and that's fantastic it's given us cell phones and nuclear warheads and all sorts of exciting things but what has been lacking in that um, progression of technology has been heart because it's been done with very much the head the head is about me and mind mine it's about um, getting my individual needs met my insecurities met my need for dominance that's all head Where the heart is not about me and mine, it's about us and our. It's about our planet, Mm -hmm. our species. Mm -hmm. And and that's a very different way of of living your life. And so this transformation, if we don't make the transformation from head to heart, if we don't make the transformation from me and my egoic wants and desires and aspirations into the collective, which is the heart, what is good for me and what's good for the whole, I believe that we will destroy this planet. And that's not only me saying that. It's Irvin Laszlo, who's a futurist. He's yeah. written over 86 books. He's an amazing man. And he wrote that back in 2012 in one of his books that I read, that we only have about another 40 or 50 years left on the current path we're on. So, you know, the old Chinese proverb, if you don't change the path you're on, you end up where you're headed. <laughs> so I think we need to look at where we're headed and change direction and the direction is very much from the head into the heart from the individuated and judgmental and separateness and fear-based world 
rather to the, the, the love. What is love? Love is about allowing, it's accepting, it is about community and caring and empathy and compassion um, and doing things that are sustainable for yourself, for your family, but for the greater community. That's what love does. And we fear does the absolute opposite. It's very destructive and very, and, and it's also fear allows you to be controlled. The more anxious you are, the more fearful you are, the more you're able to be controlled. You know, in any brainwashing program, the first thing they do is put people into fear, anxiety, stress, it's and then you're anxiety. able to control people. Um, advertising generally works that way. First of all, they come on, they give you a stressful situation. You know, um, people are judging you by the shoes you wear. Then they provide you with a nice pair of shoes, you know. So first of all, put people into fear, then provide the solution. And that is about control, where love doesn't have control. There is no control yeah. in love. Yeah. And I mean, advertising, just on that subject, I was in advertising for a large part of my life. And it's based on making you feel not good enough, mm. essentially. That's what, that's what generally advertising does, that you're not driving a good enough car because his is better, and you're not pretty enough, thin enough, rich enough, um, your lounge suite's not good enough, or whatever it is, it, it's based on you not being enough, on not having enough, um, not doing enough, and this product or whatever it is is going to make you better. And so it's based on not good enough, and I think that this is, this is the turning point where we actually realize now we actually we are good enough already. It's a return to that knowledge. So you're not going out to get something that's going to make you feel better. You're not trying to find something out there that's going to make you feel better. Because if we do that, we're going to get lost. Because this world is at the moment and for, for, for a while to come is not going to be very stable. So if we put our attention and our focus and reliant reliance on the outside world to make us feel good, it's not working very well. And this last year and a half has shown us that. Yeah. That, you know, you can't rely on those outer structures anymore. Yeah. yeah. Um, you, they're not going to make you feel good. Mm. And it's kind of almost pulled us into our own resources. It's, as John said, it's squeezed us. So we've actually seen our patterns, our behavioral patterns, our pain bodies, our, um, our, our things that actually take us off track so that we can transform them. But it's been shown in Technicolor to us um, this this past year, so that we can actually shift into another dimension, and and the planet itself is shifting into another dimension. So we have to shift with her. Yeah, and it's it's interesting because you know the uh, a lot of people are experiencing some level of anxiety, oh, yeah. stress, fear. Oh, yeah. Um, depression even, anger maybe, yeah. and uh, we think it's the external circumstances that are actually creating it. And the analogy I use is when you squeeze an orange, what do you get? Well, you get orange juice. Why don't you get pear juice? Well, there's no pear juice inside an orange. When you squeeze an orange, what's on the inside of the orange comes out. Now, these circumstances that we're finding ourselves in right now are squeezing us. And what's on the inside is coming out. So if there's fear, or if there's anxiety, if there's anger, or if there's depression, it's because you are holding it inside you. And these circumstances are now bringing it out. Now, that's not bad. Because, as someone said, um, sunlight is the, is the, um, the greatest cleanser. It's the greatest um, yeah, transformer. Mm. And so what we're doing here is we bring it out into the light. We bring that anger that we've had deeply on, you know, held on the inside, which has been running our life in the subconscious mind, is now coming out to the surface. That fear, that anxiety is coming out. Not that you need to understand it or go for therapy with it, but just allow it to come into your awareness. And the awareness is the light that transforms that ignorance, that darkness, that those subconscious programs that have been running us for a long, long time. And how do I know they're there? Well, if you look at the world, the world is a collection of our subconscious mind, really. So the patterns that we find ourselves in are an expression of our collective unconscious. And now it's coming more and more obvious. It's what the word apocalypse means. Apocalypse is for the veil of ignorance to come down and for that which was hidden behind the veil to be revealed. And there's an awful lot being revealed at the moment. It's quite shocking to see. Yeah. But they're aspects of us. Yeah, that's, yeah. And so as we bring it out into the light of ownership and the light of awareness and hold it there in the light, the light dissipates the darkness. The light of, 
of presence, the power of presence, which is also the power of love, which is the portal that's open at the moment for us. Mm -hmm. So that's a, an important aspect is that when you are feeling this, allow it to come to the surface. Now, you don't have to act on it, but just allow yeah, it. Just I'm feeling it. this way. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling this way. And you allow it to come. And any emotion that's held fully in the light of acceptance and presence with no story dissipates within 15, 30 seconds. It dissipates like a, a wave on the ocean. It just comes through very, very quickly and dissipates. It's when suppressed or when we create a story about it or we try and analyze it from a historical point of view that we hold onto that energy. Mm. Let it pass through you and to know that love conquers all. The light of love acceptance is is more powerful than any of those subconscious programs that we've been running for a long time. Yeah, and I do believe that the human spirit is incredibly strong, and especially when we're in community, especially when we can stand together, it's more powerful than anything else. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it, the human spirit shines brightly in situations where we're joyful, where we're dancing, we're singing, we're playing music, we're creating art, we, we're in nature. So if those things have been curtailed, in our kind of outer world to a degree, it's up to each of us to actually access those inside ourselves. Yeah. So if you know if you can't go and watch a play, then do something inside your own house. Listen to music, you know, turn the lights down, listen to old music that you haven't listened to for ages. Um, create your own entertainment, but do it because that is that ignites that heart spark. Yeah. And it connects us. Creativity yeah. connects us. Music shows, when you go to a music show, you walk out, if it's a good music show, you walk out feeling if euphoric. Yeah. Why? It's because we've all been in that same vibration of of beauty and yeah. love and this amazing performance. Mm. And you, you walk out literally feeling like you're on a high. Yeah. And that's because your important. chemicals have changed. Yeah. Your whole vibration's changed. That's why people do it. That's why people go to sports matches very often, because there's that feeling of we're collective. all together. Yeah. It's a collective thing. Yeah. So it's important that we keep going with that. Yeah. And community is very important with that. Yeah. That's yeah. the way the world is going. It's going away from, you know, we, we, the centralized control is, is obviously the dominating uh, the show at the moment. But we're going back, I, I to believe, community. to community, yeah. to small communities of collectives, of of like-minded people with intentions, the same sort of intention. And the important part of it is to enjoy it, to bring that joy into what you're yeah. doing. Because it's that power of joy right now, particularly for the next week or so, bring that joy into your awareness. And that ignites the fire, the fire of creativity within us um, and makes you unstoppable. It boosts your immune system for yes. a start. You know, if you think of that, we were talking about advertising yeah. earlier. I mean, the media wants you to believe that there's this risk of death. Well, I mean, death is part of life. You know, Dwayne Dyer said that life is a is a sexually transmitted terminal disease. I mean, you can't get away from death. It's going to be there. But don't let it run your life. Don't let it make your decisions. That's insanity. Live your life with joy. Enjoy that. Again, the media, when they want to sell you something, they put you in a state of fear. Don't buy into that. Life is not an accident. You're, the the yeah. date you're born on not an accident. not an accident. The date you are going to leave this planet is already written. Do not you concern yourself it. with that. Rather live your life today with joy because that joy ripples out into the whole universe and colors the, the, the whole creative potential ahead of you. So that's the power that we have. We have the power. We are immensely power, powerful individually and collectively. As we start to work collectively together, get together in meditation groups, um, it's very important to do that. You know, join, you joining the satsang is very powerful because from this resonance right now, tonight, there's a massive energy going out into, into the world. And just talking of things like that, we, most people, uh, if you, you know, when we say, what do you really, really, really want? A, a lot of people would say freedom. A lot of people would say freedom. And on the 16th of August, we're starting another journey to freedom course. So um, that's a very powerful, a powerful um, portal into inner transformation because as we change the inner, so we change the outer. And the good news is that uh, the first week, which is called Life Vision Week, is completely free. You can join us uh, for the first week. You get two Zoom calls 
and a whole week's worth of work and meditation and affirmation. And uh, you don't pay a cent for it. Mm -hmm. So you just go to our website, journeysofawakening.com and Journey to Freedom course, and you just register for the free week. Yeah, Please join us. us. It's a very powerful time, very, very powerful time to do this inner work, to do this transformation. And it's very important, um, I believe, to be part of the solution rather than part of the problem. And as we find our inner joy, our inner freedom, and our inner direction, so that radiates out into the world around us and changes mm -hmm. relationships, change, changes those work colleagues around us because we're radiating that. We're not trying to change them, but our light yeah. is enough to ignite the light in those around us. Yeah, and community basically is whatever community, if it's a positive community like this community, we don't underestimate the power mm. of this community, yeah. of communities like this, of groups like this. You mm. start your own little groups. Don't underestimate the power. Um, you know, people, galactic, other, other realms have said you can actually see little light spots of people getting together and meditating, especially on the heart. Yeah. There's an amazing book called Living in the Heart by John Barlow Melchizedek. It's an incredible book. In fact, I'm going to do a meditation based on his, um, on a meditation that he was given. Um, he was about to go on stage to do a, a, a sort of his seminar on what he used to teach, which was aligned to it, but it was a bit more complex. Mm. And he got, a, he got a visitation from Yogananda's father to say, no, 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 you, you're not going to do that. You're going to do this. And basically the meditation he gave him was something called Living in the Heart. And it was based on that. And they have done this kind of meditation also with the Merkaba, um, in integrating that, and also just the living in the heart meditation. And they have, through just having groups of people meditating, they have lifted pollution out of cities. Mm. Yeah, in very just measurable ways. Just from that. Just, yeah. I mean, they've had situations where they're mm. sitting in a group on a mountain, on a, on a sort of a hill, hill. And it's foggy and you can't see anything and it's a dark, deep, horrible cloud. And as they're meditating, a hole of, in the sky appears, a, mm. a circular Break opening. Break in the clouds. Yeah. Um, you know, where they, they used to send out the Air Force to see mm. what, what was going on. Mm. So we mustn't end, underestimate how powerful it is when we get together with one or two people or more and we stand together. And we connect and we actually lift our vibration. Mm. So anything that you can do, do it. This is the time. This is the time we've been waiting for. And it's not a time to just sit and, and, and wring our hands in despair and say, oh my God, what's going to happen to us? We don't know. We don't know. And we have the opportunity of changing course yeah. if we stand together. If we don't, well, it's going to be interesting. But if we do, we actually have the opportunity of changing course. Yeah. But it's up to each of each one of us to acknowledge that yeah. we're part of it. Yeah. Nobody's going to come down necessarily with a with a white charger and come and save the day. <laughs> it's up to us. Yeah, we are the leaders. We are the ones we're waiting for, yeah. as Michelle said. Yeah. We are the ones. We are the ones. And when we stand together and we stand together in the power of the heart, we're unstoppable. We're absolutely unstoppable. Yeah. That's the power that we have. And um, so we have our um, Journey to Freedom course starting on the 16th of August. But um, the other very powerful um, portal to transform your life is actually on the 27th of August. We have a live retreat and uh, we hold one uh, normally a year in Hogsback. And it's a powerful portal, Hogsback. It's a very powerful Just... energy center on earth. And uh, we have a five day retreat coming up there. Um, on the 27th to the 31st of August and we still have some spaces available if you want to join us there and again the details are on journeysofawakening.com um, on the menu bar at the top you'll see live events so you can take a look there at and it and we well. ignite our joy buttons yeah. there correct and it's lovely to have real Same life connection with people art yeah. and painting and yeah. beauty and yeah. it just it, it's, it's like a reboot yeah it's a reboot yeah it's a reboot. and I think we need as much strength and courage and light that we can have that we can muster so that's what our focus is that's so those are the kind of seeds that we need to plant now yeah. plant those seeds yeah. now today yeah. tonight yeah. and then water them in the next two weeks yeah particularly because that's as those the the wa the waxing moon is as those as the moon's growing so those seeds to start to actually bear they start to actually grow yeah 
So it's a powerful point. Yeah, and just to to end off uh, the session before Michelle does the um, the heart meditation, is just to know that about a um, hundred years ago, uh, we started discovering uh, the field um, called quantum physics, the field of study. And what was discovered there was that um, energy trumps matter, that all matter comes out of a field of energy. And our heart connects directly with that field in an incredible way, very, very powerful way. So this is not just um, esoteric no. mumbo jumbo, seeing purple lights. This is, this is real creative energy that we're working with here, the power of the heart. And right tonight with this um, Lion's Gate and for the next uh, week really, uh, for the next two weeks, uh, we have a powerful time to imprint into the field a new vibration. And out of that vibration, the physical reality expresses yeah, it itself. Yeah. So it's to really to be very mindful of the thoughts we think and the feelings we feel. Are we, are we a, a, a servant of fear and the collective sort of control? Or are we creators of the world that we really want to create? So be mindful of every thought you think, every feeling you feel, because it is creating a future, a collective future for all of us. Yeah, and yeah. because you're on this on this call, you're all part of this. Yeah. You're all here. You're all part of this. Yeah. And together we're very powerful. And we're all walking each other home. Just to remember that lovely phrase from uh, yeah, Ram Dass. We're all I'm walking each other home. Yeah. And we collectively can do it. We can make this shift. We have, there's no doubt in my, in my mind about it. But we have to want this change. We have to want this change more than trying to um, cover it up with, um, with external you know, objects and things uh, that are being offered to us at the moment. We've got to know that we are the power. We are the power. Yeah, and to, and to almost let go of future for now. Yeah, let go of the just, let go if, of if you can just If you feel yourself wandering off into the future, which is very... You know, to attend, there's a tendency to do exactly that. Oh my goodness, what's going to happen? Just go, mm -hmm. well, is that, is that actually helping anything? No. Because none of us know what the future holds. Yeah. What we do know is this. Yeah. And this is what we can actually influence. This is where we can influence. We cannot influence the, we cannot tell what the future is going to happen, or what's no. going to happen in the future. Because I think that future is uncertain because it could go either way. And this is a turning point for us in humanity. Mm. It could go either way, and it's up to us. In this moment. It hasn't been, the future has not necessarily been written any one way. It's possible that we're actually part of it evolving into that or that. Mm. So whatever Except that the one is, thing I, I know is that love always wins. Love always wins. <laughs> love always wins. Yeah. Love but, always wins. But, but the near future is going to be up to us. We, 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 it's yeah. part of our, our journey. Yeah. We are all part of that. Yeah. And your point of power is in the present moment, as Michelle said. Your point of power is not in the future and it's not in the past. In fact, you're disempowered by thoughts of the future and thoughts of the past. That robs you of the heart because the heart is always in the vertical plane. It's always in presence. And that's where our power is. Not in future and not in past, but in the present moment. Your point of power is in the present moment. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You're going to do a nice yes. hot meditation I for am. us. Great. Super. Okay, hopefully my Thank voice you. won't go all soft. And, and just a little request, if you're enjoying tonight, then please can you press the like button and the share button because it really does help get this uh, podcast, video cast, whatever you call it, out into no, the world. Please do help that. It so help us that. with that. Thank you. Okay. So let's just settle down and sort of... Get yourself into a comfy situation wherever you are. Forward a little bit. And take a beautiful deep breath in. Beautiful deep breath. And then release on the out breath. Just let it all go. Now take a deep belly breath in. So blowing up your belly on the in breath. Bringing the air all the way up into your chest. And then releasing it on the out breath. And as you release it, release your shoulders and soften your body. Just bring yourself very gently into the present. Allow your breath to just 
come in and out rhythmically and smoothly. Feeling more relaxed with each exhalation. Consciously relax your body. Consciously open. So you can put your shoulders back a little bit. Relax your hands so that your heart is open. There's no restriction. If you feel any restriction or any tightness, send your breath into that area and then consciously release it. Con consciously just let it go. Allow yourself to just drift very gently into this moment. Now I'd like you to take your attention to a beautiful place in nature. A place that is the most beautiful place for you. It could be anywhere that really resonates with you in nature. Allow yourself to go to that place. And to really feel it. Make it as vivid as you can. See what you can see. What time of day is it? Imagine feeling the air on your skin. The ground beneath your feet. Notice any plant life or animal life. Maybe you pick up something from the ground, touch it, feel it, smell it, make it really real. This beautiful, beautiful place from nature. And start to just feel the feelings of gratitude and love that you have for our planet. This beautiful, unbelievably beautiful planet. Mother Gaia that holds us all, that supports us all, that nourishes us all, that feeds us all. Constantly, day after day, allow that love for Mother Gaia to grow in your heart. Allow it to grow even bigger. So that your heart is beating with that warmth of love. And when the time feels right for you, put this love that you feel, this beautiful warm love, into a sphere of light and send it down from your heart all the way down through your legs, through your feet and right down deep, deep, deep inside Mother Earth. So you're sending your love, you're literally sending your love into Mother Earth. Doesn't matter if you don't see it, just intend it. That's all you need to do. Sending your love into this beautiful earth that's supported and provided for each of us, for our whole lives. And then just sit quietly Connecting with your heart. And see if you can feel the love from Mother Earth coming back up into you. So up through your feet as a wave of light. Could have a different color for you. What color is this? It's a beautiful wave of loving light that Mother Earth is sending us. Let this light fill you up from the feet up. All the way up to your heart and all the way through your body, out through the top of your head. And then let it settle in your heart. Allow this beautiful light to radiate to every cell in your body and out into your light body as well. And out even further into the field. 
feel this beautiful love which your mother has surrounded you with and just stay in union with it and with her. Just breathing, being here fully present. Just allowing your breath to breathe you, allowing life to breathe you. And now gently and without breaking any of this love union with Mother Earth, take your attention up above your head and out into the sky above you. Imagine the night sky. You can see the Milky Way, the beautiful stars, the space, infinite space. Watch the stars as they meander across the heavens. You might connect with the planet or you might connect with the, the moon, which is quite dark at this point, but she's still there. You might feel the energy of the sun hidden beneath the earth. Get the feeling of space, of freedom, of infinity. As you drift along, knowing that you're connected with Father Sky, or with the Divine Father. Thanking this beautiful, light, free energy. Thanking the sun, thanking the air, thanking the space, thanking the light. That just infuses us every single day. The air that helps us to communicate. We wouldn't be communicating if it wasn't for air. We wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for light. We wouldn't have the seasons if it wasn't for the movement of the planets. The sun and the moon. So feel this feeling. Feel the love and the gratitude that you have for the sky, for the divine. Father, feel it inside your heart. Put that love inside your heart and send it out into those heavens. If you know about unity consciousness and the grid around the earth, send it into the grid. Otherwise, just send it out. Radiate it out. And then reconnect with your heart. Center of your being. And just be for a while. And wait until you receive that feeling back. Be open. Open your heart to receive it. It might come in through a wave of light, maybe a different color, maybe a different texture. Allow that wave of light to come through your head, light your whole body up, all the way through your body, all the way through your arms, your legs, your organs, your spine, down through your legs, into the earth, and then back up again. Till you're back in your heart again. Let it settle in your heart. This moment, there's a, a beautiful holy trinity that's formed. The Divine Mother, the Divine Father, and the Divine Child. Beautiful triangle. It's in this place of consciousness, this place of being, this place of integration, that we connect directly with the Divine. So in this place, just be fully present in this moment, in your heart. Nothing you have to do. Nowhere you have to go. Just opening more and more. 
Now we're going to take it a little bit deeper. We're going to drop down even further. Imagine dropping down even further, even quieter. Imagine a beautiful swirling liquid whirlpool. Like a little bit like a donut. Imagine that you're on this little whirlpool and you're going around slowly, slowly, and you're headed towards the middle of it. It starts to speed up a little bit and you move towards the middle and then you drop very gently through the middle and land very softly like a feather in your heart. This place that's very still, this place that's very sacred. This sacred space of the heart, which is older than creation itself. This space was there before the galaxies. This is the space where you plant your true heart's desires, your true heart's intentions. This is the fertile place. Connecting with this very quiet, very still place inside you, this presence, this being. And into the small, beautiful flame appears. Plant your intention into this flame, into the light. Your intention that you'd like to water, your intention that you'd like to grow, your intention that you'd like to radiate out into the world. Plant that seed and commit yourself to watering and nurturing that seed over the next two weeks and for the rest of your life actually. And now just rest in that awareness for a few more seconds. Breathing into that intention. Nourishing it with your attention, with your awareness. And then you can bring your hands up into prayer position and just give thanks that it is done. That intention is out there. It's being planted. And now take a deep breath in. And a releasing breath out. And another deep breath in. And a releasing breath out. And you can rub your hands together. Become aware of yourself sitting or lying down. And when you're ready, gently open your eyes. That was beautiful. That was really beautiful. Good. Really connected with the heart. And when you put your hands in front of your chest, like in prayer position, in namaste position, uh, that's the heart mudra. So yes. that is, a, you activate your heart when your thumbs touch your breastbone like that, in front of your heart like that. Yeah. It was beautiful. That was Good. a really lovely meditation. Great. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Let's just give you um, a, a card from the, from the affirmation pack. Let's just see what we're going to choose for this week. So this card says, there are no mistakes in my life, just misperceptions and judgments to be healed. I accept what is. Thank you. There's a beautiful affirmation for the, world, for the week ahead. I accept what is. Thank you. I accept what is. Thank you. It's a green card. It's the heart. Mm -hmm. So I'll photograph that and I'll put it on the, uh, on the Facebook page uh, shortly. Bless you all. Have a beautiful week um, ahead. And for all those ladies with us tonight, happy Women's Day. Yes, it's Women's happy, Day. Happy, happy Women's Day tomorrow. <laughs> yeah.
Love you all. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing your light with the world tonight. Bless you all. Lots of love, everybody. Mwah.